Hello YouTube, this is Detroit Borg, and today is July 28th, 2010, a day after Apple introduced the new Magic Trackpad. The Magic Trackpad essentially is an external version of the trackpad built into the MacBooks. Essentially, this will bring some of the multi-touch gesturing features available on the MacBook to a desktop Mac. So either your iMac, Mac Mini, or Mac Pro. Now let's just take a look around the box. So we have the Magic Trackpad wireless multi-touch trackpad. It does connect through Bluetooth. On the back we see some of the gesturing features you can use with the trackpad. Now we can see on the side that it requires Bluetooth enabled Mac computer with Mac OS 10.6.4 or later and the latest software update. You'll need an existing keyboard and a mouse for a setup. Batteries are included. Not all applications support multi-touch control. So we can see the model number designed by Apple in California and made in China. So this is model A1339. Just have a little tab to pull it up. So you see it has this little cardboard cradle, you just pull it out. Inside is the booklet. Magic trackpad. So we have a manual. Also have a Bluetooth regulatory certificate, limited warranty. If we take a look around, we see it's just covered in plastic. So we have a little sticker up here that warns that you need Mac OS 10 version 10.6.4 plus an Apple Magic trackpad software update. And you'll have to go to support.apple.com for downloads. Let's just pull this open. right off. Now this is a glass surface which means it will not wear out. If this were plastic uh, like they were in previous MacBooks it would wear out with use. So this should always have the same consistent finish no matter how much you use it. On the back of course we have the Apple logo and we have the feet down here and these feet are actually part of the clicking mechanism on the uh, trackpad itself. So when you press down on the trackpad this is what clicks. So you can actually hear it clicking here. When you press down, it clicks. On this side, we have a power button, which is also protected with a little plastic tab. Let's peel that off. Looks like a uh, piece of stainless steel, just like on the wireless keyboard. On the side, we have this battery cover, which is protected with a plastic tab. Let's pull that off. Now, to unscrew this, all you do is use a uh, coin. If we look right here, we see we need two AA batteries, which should already be included. Let's open the compartment. I'm just going to use a little penny here. Unscrews. There we go. Here are the batteries. Let's see what they put in here. Energizer batteries. Of course, these are non rechargeable, so these are disposable. Apple did release a battery charger, which seems to be coming out a few days after this, so I'm going to go pick that up as soon as that becomes available. And I'll use those batteries instead of these, at least once these run out. Apple says that the Magic Trackpad features the same sculpted aluminum design as the Apple wireless keyboard and side by side the two sit flush at the same angle and height. So you can go from typing to gesturing in one motion or uh, do both at the same time. So let's take a look at that. So you put them side by side, they seem to match up pretty well. So indeed it does look like the trackpad is perfectly married to a wireless keyboard. I just want to point out that you certainly can use the trackpad with other keyboards. You can certainly use it with the Apple Wired keyboard. It just doesn't look as seamless as it does with a Apple wireless keyboard. They are at the same angle, so they're fairly close. If not the same angle, they're very close. But of course, they're different in thickness because the Apple Wired keyboard doesn't have a battery compartment. If we look at the side, we see they have the same basic design. The power button on the right side with the same aluminum chassis. Of course the trackpad doesn't have the buttons on it, but they're about the same thickness. And to change the batteries all you have to do is use a coin to open these slots on the left side. If you look at the back they have the same glossy plastic with the Apple logo with the rubber feet, but on the trackpad they're actually clicking feet so they actually uh, do something besides just support the trackpad. And they share the same rubber foot design at the top of the device. Now, Apple also boasts that this is the largest trackpad they've ever produced. This is nearly 80% bigger than the trackpad on the MacBook. So that gives you more surface area for scrolling, rotating, zooming, pinching, whatever. 
To activate this, all we have to do is click the power button. We see a little light that appears, which is just like the wireless keyboard from Apple. So right now it's flashing, attempting to pair with a computer. So I'm going to go over to my iMac and make the connection. Now let's go ahead and pair the Bluetooth trackpad. I'm going to go up to my Bluetooth control up here. I'm going to scroll down to set up a Bluetooth device. Right now it's searching for Bluetooth. Found my MacBook. And now it's found the Apple wireless trackpad. So let's click continue. Congratulations, your computer is now set up to use your Bluetooth mouse. In order to configure and set up your mouse pad, you will need to install a piece of software. And you can do this in two ways. You can go to support.apple.com front slash downloads and download the driver directly. Or you can run a software update. The software update will detect that a new Bluetooth mouse pad has been attached and software is needed. In this case, we're looking for the Magic Trackpad and Multi-Touch Update. Install the software and you will be prompted to restart your computer. Now we've installed the software. Let's go to System Preferences. Now we have a control panel for the trackpad, so let's open that. And here we have something that's very familiar to MacBook users, basically a trackpad controller. And in the right side, we see we have a little demonstration of what each function does. For tap to click, this basically allows the user to tap the trackpad instead of pushing down on it to make a selection. Now dragging allows you to double click on a window, which allows you to hold on to it and move it around. And when you lift your finger, it lets it go. Now drag lock allows you to double click on an object, drag it around. And you can lift your finger again Place your finger back on the trackpad, move it around again, and tap again to let it go. Secondary click is basically right click, so you can choose the bottom right corner or the bottom left corner. Now two finger scrolling allows you to scroll an object by using two fingers, so you can scroll in any direction. And we also have the option to scroll with inertia or without inertia. Now rotate allows you to use two fingers to move an image around. Now pinch open and close allows you to zoom up on images. Now this is specific to only certain apps. Screen zoom allows you to work with the uh, keyboard to zoom up on the screen of your Mac. Now if you hold down the control key, you can use two fingers to scroll in or up. Now under options, you can zoom while holding the control key, or you can select a different key, option or command. When zoomed in, the screen image moves either continuously with the pointer, only when the pointer reaches an edge, or so the pointer is at or near the center of the image. And you can also uncheck or check smooth images. Secondary tap is basically right click, but instead of using the corners of the track panel, all you have to do is use two fingers. Now with the three finger gestures, you can either swipe to navigate as shown in the demo, or you can select dragging. The four finger gesture down activates expose and the four finger gesture up hides all windows. And swiping left or right will allow you to switch applications. So let's see that again, four fingers to activate the switcher and then one finger to select. Once again, this is Detroit Borg with an unboxing and demonstration of Apple's new Magic Trackpad. Thanks for watching.